For this peacock, I really wasn't sure where I was going with it and I wasn't sure if I wanted something a bit more loose in style and so it was a bit of a play, a um, bit of an experiment, um, really wasn't definite about where I was going so I didn't do this one as a tutorial, it's on board so it won't stick with my magnet. Well, I've got an extra strong one here, maybe that will stick. No, that won't stick either. Um, yeah, I, it was a bit uh, looser in style than my usual tutorials. Uh, so I thought, no, I'm not going to have this as a tutorial, but I am going to film it. And you, so sometimes you can hear me saying it's a tutorial, sometimes you can hear me saying it's not a tutorial. <laughs> ah, I was a bit confused because it was all new to me. Um, but anyway, I recorded it and narrated all the way through it as I was doing it. So you um, can follow my colour choices and my thought processes and how, how, um, how I got around things that I didn't like. And this bit especially here was particularly awful. Um, I, I just hated doing that. But I got through it. I talked myself through it. I coached myself through it. Um, and and you're going to see the whole process. There's about I think there's six parts to it, so it's uh, it's going to be hopefully really interesting for you to watch the whole process come together, and also um, understand my thought processes and um, where I find it hard, where I find it easy. Um, above all, I really hope you enjoy it. So for the start of this tutorial I just painted the background black with black watercolour. You can also use black gouache uh, but I wouldn't recommend using acrylic, not unless you water it down quite a lot because um, acrylic can eat up your tooth. And on this occasion whilst we're not doing lots of detail on the background we still do need a little bit of tooth for um, some pastel to go on the top of this black. Now it has given us a cauliflower effect around the edge but really it doesn't matter because we can just go use our pastels and go over the top with that. So it, it's all good, we could just got to find the, uh, the outline. Um, and and we'll be good to go. You can you can even almost see it under the black, so it's not a problem. So I've got a handful of blues and a black and my favourite. Oh no. That's the danger of holding lots of pencils in your hand is that you'll drop one and huh, Break the lead, that's unfortunate. Never mind. That's why I've got a carpet on the floor or a rug, so they uh, bounce mostly. Right, yeah, so I've got a range of blues um, in all different black brands. Um, I'm not too fussed about brands, to be honest, I'm more concerned about colours. Right, I'm just going to find the see where that is, just find my feet here a little bit and work out where I am. We've got the nostril going in there, I'll just put that in because I can see it. A bit of a dark around the beak. And then there's this really lovely pastel colour from Carbothello. It's number 642. It's um, what about it's called uh, Kaput Mortem and it's a lovely colour. I'm just going to bring the beak back in here. Just slightly dips down there. Just 
There we go, so I've got a nice shape there. And I'll get a lighter, lighter blue just to go around the edge, not too light. Just to find my line. good okay so first of all I'm going to get a nice dark unison pastel and just dot some color into here like this so I don't really know where I'm going with this it's a quite a chunky stick it's quite hard to see what I'm doing and it's even more hard or made harder by the fact that I'm filming and I can't sort of come around this side of the camera and and see where it's actually touching so I just add a little bit at a time and really it's just to get pigment on here because I'm going to start manipulating that with my darkest blue pastel pencil this is our 157 Faber-Castell. It's a really good dark blue. I think it might be the darkest pastel pencil, darkest blue pastel pencil out of all the brands. But if you don't have one that's dark enough, you can add black to it, as I will be doing in a minute. So I'm just using the pastel pencil as a blender to get the soft pastel to move there. And it's not dark enough, it needs to be black, black. And I quite like the Faber-Castell black because it is quite hard compared to, I think it is harder than the Carbacello black. And the, whilst the, Karen Dash Black is probably blacker, it's softer, so I much prefer this one. There. And I'm going to put some purple in the eye, in the catch light in the eye. So I've got a lovely purple here, this one, it's a Carbothello 385 and a white Faber Castell. So I put the white on first to get that white really bright. And then I'm just going to tint it with this purple. And add a bit more white in. And you can just push and pull the pastel about. This is a little camera lens dust blower. You can get them for a few pounds or dollars and it just moves the pastel away for you. Don't use it really vigorously because you'll end up um, blowing pastel dust everywhere and, and that's not good for anyone. There we go. Add a little bit more black above the eye there and then we've got a lovely lower lid and I say lovely because there's some lovely light bouncing off it and we can use one of my favourite pastel pencils for this actually two this this is a nice one. The Old Rose Dark is a gorgeous Cretor colour pastel pencil. Lilac is my favourite colour. I think that running across there. So I'm just doing the whole thing. Purple then I can add to it. 
This one is a 631, it's light ultramarine violet, it's from Caran d'Ache and look at that beautiful lovely highlight that will sit on top of there. And we can put some of the old rose dark at the top as well. come back to our darker colours for underneath and I could add a little bit of the stick under here just to give us a punch of colour see how I just dab it first just to see where I'm touching the paper I'll go for my sharper end there we go just put a bit of that pigment on there and now I'm going to move it about gone into the lilac area but that's okay I can just go over the top get rid of it blow that off there and another thing you can do is just pick up a little bit of pigment like that put it on the end of your pencil if you want to have a bit more of a punch to your colour you can do that you can also do that with a tortillon, and that's really effective as well. Get some of this dark going up here. sort of doing a kind of a place saver for me because I'm sort of although I've got a line image down here it's only very rough so just need to find out where I'm going across here I'm just putting some marks in drawing in the shapes but I'm also thinking about the 3D effects that I want to achieve here and and it's got to be so the face is coming out like this so I am thinking about the light as I do this and I'm not pressing very hard because if I press hard I'll end up using up all the tooth That's no good. So this section here, very dark because it goes in and under that eye. So I'm just making sure I get that nice and dark. But also getting the right shapes because these shapes are arced and it, it's helping the 3D effect as it goes under there. Here again we've got dark because it's going back in so this bit's the, the more forward bit. We've got some bumps around here part of the head where it does come forward and it's catching the light. 
clouds and bits here catching the light like this. We've got this dark coming under the beak. Shadow. Extra dark area in there. Just go a little bit darker along there. Really want that beak to stand out forward from these really bright light areas that are in the background. Okay, so I'm going to get my dark 22 again. It's a really good dark unison pastel. I'm just going to dot some pigment onto the paper. Dotting it around. To add to that colour vibrancy that we're going to put on top. There are dark areas all around, so... As long as I don't put too much of this on, it doesn't go too thick, I'll still have tooth to play around with the pencil and put some detail on top. And I can go blacker as well. So this is a BB-18, it's a, a royal blue, I'm just going to put some of that on, so we're just dotting it across, not pressing very hard, I don't want to put too much pastel down because again I'll eat the tooth away and we need to preserve that, so because these pastels are so um, full of pigment you don't need to press very hard just literally dotting it and you get the colour on there back to the dark 22 and then I'm just going to give it a little blend just to spread that pastel about like that put a little bit more at the top I can bring that round the side so just dotting it on again Around here. 
here we can do that bit as well. Try not to just colour in the whole area because you'll probably end up doing it too thick. And now I'm going to get a lighter colour. I don't want to go too light. So let's try this one. This is a 425 Carbacello. I do like to try it on my actual photo reference sometimes to see how close I am to the right colour. And I quite like that. So I'm just putting marks on in the direction of these little feathers. Not really worrying about where they're going compared to the darker colour that I just put on, but just doing it in a, a pattern that I can see on the top of the head. Closer to that background, coming in there. So I'm just layering the pastel to give me some depth to these little tiny feathers on the top of his head, and then I'll come in with a, a lighter colour. got a, a couple of choices here. I've got this Carbothello 440 or a Carandash 161. I'm leaning towards this one because Carandash is softer and more vibrant. We'll see. Let's try both. Yeah, I think I will use both actually. Um, I use the Carbothello first. It's just a little darker. So I'll bring some of these a little lighter. You just put that on top. Then go lighter. Just come in with the darker, make this look a bit more random rather than having it stop at a straight line. Nature is random. Any uniform, any uniformity is just doesn't look right. And then just taking that a little bit darker by just skimming over the top. Some of this royal blue over the top. Back in with a few highlights.
You can just see these feathers kind of doing a little pattern coming across here. So we'll help that, make that happen and that will help with the effect that we're trying to create. And it's really going to help when we get this white in here because that's going to alter the contrast completely. So I'm just going to put that in now and then you'll see how things change when you've got that white contrasting with the blues. The blues will look more vibrant because of the white. the white on down here as well. So I'm not doing it really uh, opaque, just putting a layer down because this isn't, even though it's white, we're not going to keep it white. It's, there's more, there's some yellows under here and there's some greys and blues as well. So we're going to have all of those in there. It's really white along this front here, and then all of this is a an off-white. We'll just do that for now. I know I did black around here earlier, but I'm just going to put blue around the edge because I will be having some blue on this background, not just not just uh, black. It's going to be a mixture, so coming close to that head because that'll be easier with a pencil to get that more accurate. Make it slightly darker at the front here than on top to get our 3D effect working as well. So back to that Karen Dash one.
and then as we come down here we just a little bit darker coming all down here with a little bit of highlight so I'm just using this royal blue to cover over the paper so we can't see grey and then I use a mixture of light and darks to get this effect If you think in terms of creating an effect of the texture of whatever it is you're trying to create, rather than think, oh, I'm drawing feathers or I'm painting feathers, it helps you get your head around how to do it. You're just doing the effect, you're not actually painting them, because if you actually painted them, it would be painstaking. So creating the effect is faster. And also it looks more realistic because you are what you're seeing is the play of light upon the subject rather than subject on its own. Just trying to match the tone by changing the, the colours I'm using. There, that's better. I'm just going to go back to the old rose dark, get something coming across his top eyebrow and then it just goes really dark across there in there so a bit of blue first and then darken the blue with the black down that lilac and skimming the pencil across the top. Likewise here we're just darkening down. We're not doing an opaque uh, we're not going pressing really hard to make it opaque. We are just literally just glazing over the top. So we can still see that layer underneath. This is looking too straight across here, so I've just got to make it look a bit more random. 
it's looking too neat and tidy and it needs a bit of a bumpy bumpy edge like that Making this lighter coming in here. And then lighter again. I'll go to this one first, it's slightly slightly darker. And then to get these blues to blend in, I'm just doing very light tickling over the top just to blend them like that. We get back under here. It's very dark under here, so we get that in there. So when you're choosing your blues, you just need to get the ones you have, don't worry about having the same ones as me, um, and just say, well this is my darkest, this is my lightest, and then order them all within the same dark to light, between the darkest and the lightest, and then you just use those and work from there. What's important is the tone, it's so much more important than the actual colours you use because the, t the colour comes from the surrounding light and depending on what time of day it is, what the surroundings are, it's always going to be different. So the next peacock I do, I I'm, I'm probably use different, different blues. Or maybe I would change the photo, the photo reference, and do something completely different and not even use blues at all. And maybe I'd just go all towards green, or I'd put it in a red light, and even a red, but you'd still know it was a peacock because of the tones. do this grey area now, so under here, I've just got a mid grey, this one is actually a Creta Colour 33, but I've only picked that one up because it's the first one I found in my drawer, so there's a bit of yellow under there, I don't know if that's actually meant to be there or not. And I've manipulated this photo and played around with it. So um, I need to go back to the original photo and work out if it really is. And wow, yeah, it really is yellow. Um, not sure if I'm going to add yellow though. Yeah, I don't think I like it. I'm going to leave that out. I think what I'm going to add in there is some purple, purpley pink. Uh, something like 
it's really nice. I don't have very many Derwent pencils, but there's some really nice, a couple of really nice Derwent ones. This is one of them. It's a 230 Soft Violet. I'm just going to put that in there. Now, just because I'm doing this, it doesn't mean it's not a peacock. You can get away with that. And a little bit of blue in there. Autistic license. And then across here, so I'm just tickling the paper and putting a tiny layer glazing over the top down here to give this a bit of a 3D effect and across here and I'm just going to make that a bit softer coming in there no harsh lines in there Just blending those colours with the pencil, like that. And that's, that's quite light and bright down there. So we'll get some of that in. Soften that edge there, it looks a bit harsh. So just do little arc shapes to soften that edge, make, make it look like it, that it doesn't have a sharp turn, much, much softer. Sharper white. I have got this white. It's still a Faber Castell white, but it is um, it broke, so it's a flat top, and flat tops can be really useful because they can have quite sharp edges. So I've got a few white pastel pencils and some of them are chisel shaped, some are flat tops and some are pointed and it means I don't have to keep changing the shape of the top of the pencil to and waste valuable pastel in the meantime and it's quicker as well. To this one, so I'm just going to glaze some white all over this big because it's very light and pastely, and that could put more to my put on earlier. Although I need that colour, it's not actually the colour I'm going to use now. It's not, I don't like it. that across there just putting a very light layer of white in most areas except where it's really dark get some under there
I've got my blue, darkest blue, the 157 Faber Castell. Just reinforcing the nostril area. And then we've got a bit of dark coming across here. And it's, it's a bit darker than the purple that I want to use. So I'm putting this in first and then I'll get the purple glazing over the top of it and it'll give me the colour and the tone that I want. And then likewise across here. and then I'll use that Derwent that I used before. So this is the dark Derwent, the P230. Let's put that under there. I think I'll have to go a bit darker. Try blue first. rather just coming in under there I'll come back over that Let's skim over that white about the tone the whole time so that will really help the 3D effect Right, that's nice. I like that colour now. So, possibly, I think that's going to be too light. So, we'll just use this one again. Come across there with the pink. And it's quite purpley at the top. Purple going across and neaten up that edge. white and just glaze it over the top to just go a bit lighter and got 
to note the light that comes across here because that is really creating that form. It goes a bit darker under there. Just under there. If you have trouble trying to work out what's going on on something that's quite complicated like a beak or a nose or a, um, a muzzle on a dog, if you try not to think about what it is and just focus on the tones and the shapes and the texture, it's a lot easier. So we're uh, getting there. Now I need to put some more of my dark colours down. So dark 22. Now I'm not just doing this in a whole block of colour because that wouldn't give us any kind of um, texture and feather like qualities to it. So I'm looking for the direction that everything's going in and the shapes that I see and creating those. So I just patted it down a little bit, I didn't do any blending there.
Just getting all these to blend gently together. Create some nice effects. And I can use um, my pencil to do some blending as well. That often creates a nice effect and doesn't crush the pastel. So uh, it keeps it nice and fresh. in there as well just to take that a little darker in there back to the pencil And just moving the pastel about to get it to cover the paper very lightly so I'm just tickling over the top I don't need to press very hard and then I just need to go a little bit lighter just to get a tiny bit of light in there on top just get rid of some loose pastel there And then this section here, it's quite light, uh, but we have got some darker areas. So just doing it how I did the top of the head. Getting a little bit of dark. Just a little coating like that. And I'll go for my lighter. I might just give that a little blend in. Pastel mat is a bit like, uh, well it does have a pile to it, but it's a very tiny pile and you can uh, a pile like velour paper that is like a, a carpet um, you can push into the layers and that means you can get more layers on top which is fab Back to the light blues here. So I'm just going to get this in because this is really, it's a really nice feather here. It's very light. And we'll just put a lighter one on top. some of that around there as well there's not too much of that in the actual photo reference but remember you don't have to be a slave to the photo reference just put a bit in there 
we go. I'm just getting the tone right again and trying not to make things look too even and making it look more um, more natural by being a bit more random. So try not to make all these little dots that I'm putting on look all lined up or in any kind of uniform pattern but making them random, which is quite hard. It's not um, not something that I was naturally good at when I first started. I had to learn how to be random and that mostly involved <laughs> closing my eyes and looking away <laughs> and then the things turned out random. And I still do that to some extent. I don't actually close my eyes, but I look away briefly for seconds and or you know milliseconds and then come back. And that helps me to be a bit more random. Okay, we've just gone a little bit too light there, so I'm going to bring some dark back into it. My dark pencil. Just dabbing that colour in. Pulling it out of that dark area. Pushing it in from here. on again. Get a little bit darker with the black. So we can go in there with a bit of black around there. Definitely in here. Like I just want to go a bit lighter on here, a bit lighter than that. Just 
and a little bit of more effect on those feathers just there. But all that area there is the effect of the, the light. So um, the head is creating that shadow section and then it will come all down here. But I'm not doing that section there because we've got this to do, which is just a bit crazy if I'm honest with you. <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> but um, I've kind of given myself a little bit of a... A guide I can I have um, traced some lines on there so I'm kind of ooh, might be okay with it but before I do that I want to get some nice blue up here mm -hmm. 